Welcome to Design Domination, where you'll gain confidence, clarity, and a competitive edge in a crowded marketplace so you can dominate your competition. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Colleen Grotzer, and in this episode of Design Domination, I'm sharing my top 11 business books for graphic designers. Most of these business books are specifically for creatives. A couple are not, but they are so good that I had to include them. They still have great advice that you can apply to your freelance business or agency. And these are not listed in any particular order. The first one is the business side of creativity. Cameron Foote is a legend in the creative industry. I was delighted to talk to him on my podcast. His books and his newsletters, even Cam himself from time to time, were so helpful to my business when I was starting out and for several years after that. Now, my copy of The Business Side of Creativity by Cameron Foote is from 1996, (laughs) but the advice is still relevant for designers looking to start their freelancing business. There is a more recent version than the one that I have, though. Now, in one section, he talks about the pros and cons of leaving a full-time job and working for yourself. So you can decide if having your own business full-time is a good fit for you or not. And then in another section, he talks about what things you need to do to start your business, including some legal and tax aspects to consider. And he also goes into pricing, dealing with clients, sales and marketing, even adding staff at one point if you choose. The back of the book contains tons of helpful sample forms, such as non-compete agreements, retainers, questionnaires, an estimate, and a proposal. This is just overall an awesome resource to learn how to start your freelancing business. Cam's other book that I have and recommend is The Creative Business Guide to Running a Graphic Design Business. Now, this book covers similar topics. The organization of your business, the business structure, hiring, marketing and promotion, sales, pricing, working with clients, and other topics. And it too includes sample forms like a business plan, proposal, work for hire agreement, and then others. I recommend both of his books, even though there is some overlap. But if you have to pick just one, I think I'd say that the business side of creativity may be more helpful for freelancers. Number three is the Win Without Pitching Manifesto. This is a must read for all creatives. It's by Blair Enns, who I also had on the podcast. Now, first I have to comment about the physical book. It's a hardback, at least my copy is. It has foil stamping and it has some hand lettering. And the inside last page actually includes credits for not just the cover design and the hand lettering, but also the typefaces used in the book and who printed it. When I mentioned this on the podcast, Blair said it was because it was a book for designers, so he wanted to be appealing to designers, and it is. About a third of the pages in my book are dog-eared. The book includes 12 proclamations for creative businesses to go from being seen as order takers to experts. Something Blair says in the book, and that he said on the podcast, is that no is the second best answer that we can hear. And that might sound counterintuitive to most designers. But he also says, those who cannot talk about money do not make it. And he also talks a lot about how important it is to specialize and to be selective. This book will challenge you to get out of your comfort zone and make better business decisions. And as someone who's done that, I can tell you how rewarding it is once you do that, even though it can be so scary. Now, Pricing Creativity is another book by Blair Enns. And in its print format, it's a very cool hardback binder with tabbed sections. Blair goes into the mindset of pricing, how to price, how to present it, and different conversations to have with clients and a whole bunch of other great stuff. He makes these really interesting comparisons between pricing creative projects and the airline industry. Oh, and it also includes a few worksheets as well. Now, I highly recommend this book because it will not only help you overcome your own self-limiting beliefs about pricing, but help you increase your profitability. You know, most designers undercharge or devalue their own work, and therefore, so does the client. Number five is Brutally Honest by Emily Cohen, which I have as an ebook. And I also had her on the podcast. This book has tons of business advice and insights in the areas of positioning, marketing and promotion, getting new business, pricing, proposals and contracts, even staff management, and then client and project management and industry trends. Now, it's a really fun book to read because it's really colorful and it contains infographics and checklists. It's also got some little short sayings in between some pages that are kind of neat. And it also includes 20 case studies from other creatives, one who I actually know. 
The case studies are from solo designers and they're also from firms. And Emily has an approach that is very opinionated and direct. So if you like that, then you'll really enjoy this book. Number six is Stop Thinking Like a Freelancer. I read this book by Liam Veach when it first came out in 2014. Almost half of my copy of the book is dog-eared. It's chock full of insightful, actionable advice from Liam and other people. Now he covers topics like mindset, attracting the right clients, differentiating yourself, getting more exposure, and a slew of others. And it also includes a lot of helpful examples. And what I like too is that Liam shares his own story as a web designer who's been through all the trials and tribulations of freelancing, and then he actually built a larger agency. Number seven is a book called Ballsy, How to Grow a Bigger Pair and Score Extreme Business Success. <laughs> now this is by Karen Salmonson, and it came out in 2006. It's a thick square book filled with 99 short, strong, and witty insights and quotes that she compiled from her colleagues and mentors. And Karen says that success is only 3% talent and that designers need to work the other 97% more in order to stand out. Now, this is a quick and fun read because of all the great design and typography and illustrations in here. A couple of quotes include, play with people who are better than you. And talk is not only cheap, but can be very expensive. And you could read one quote a day or like the whole book in one sitting. Now, number eight is the business of expertise. I've followed David C. Baker for many years. He always has great advice for creatives. And I actually spoke to him about my own business probably like 15 years ago or so. Unfortunately, at that time, I wasn't ready to invest in myself and my mindset back then was a complete mess. <laughs> I had him on the podcast too. So I was really excited to read The Business of Expertise when it came out. And there were so many great insights in here, such as if it's easy to find a replacement for your expertise, you have no control or power or choice when you withhold it. If you are not blessed with a heavy dose of confidence, you'll need extra opportunity. Money is the currency of respect and the customer of an expert treats the advice more seriously if it comes with a hefty bill. I mean, ow, these are hard-hitting, eye-opening statements, right? This is great stuff. This book is chock full of positioning advice for creative business owners and freelancers. Now, number nine is Built to Sell by John Warrillow. This is an essential read for graphic designers who have a team or who want to one day think about selling their creative business. And if you haven't thought that far ahead, don't wait. This book tells the story of a fictional creative business owner who finds it hard to compete with other creative businesses and has a gorilla client and cash flow issues. So he goes to talk to a trusted friend and advisor who then leads him through a process of making his business more niched, more profitable, and more appealing to someone to potentially buy it. Now, even if you haven't thought about selling your creative business one day, and even if you're a solo designer, this book will be eye-opening. It is chock full of so many great business tips. Now, number 10 is actually not a creative business book. It's a book for any business, and that's Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. Now, I recommend this because most graphic designers are concerned with charging hourly for their time. And you may not even know if your hourly rate covers your costs of being in business, you know, and maybe you're not thinking about profit. Well, Mike Michalowicz will not only change the way you think about money in your business, but he takes a different approach from the sales minus expenses equals profit. His view is sales minus profit equals expenses. So this book will help you understand this, but it will also help you assess your own business and set up the profit first system for your own business. And I've got a few friends who've used this system and gotten great results from it. Now, last but not least is Gap Selling by Keenan, another great book. Sales can be a really dry and intimidating topic for designers, as you probably know, but Keenan breaks things down in plain English with helpful stories and examples and a few worksheets. And his straight talk and his personality really kept me engaged and his perspective on some things are different from what most experts have always said. Like he says, people don't buy from you because they like you. They don't care about you or your service. And he also says that it's not your job to overcome objections. It's the client's job. 
This book gave me many aha moments. I recommend this if you're a designer looking for a no-nonsense book about understanding the sales process and getting the client to yes. So those are my top 11 business books for creatives. I wanna hear from you. Have you read any of them? Is your favorite book missing from my list? Let me know in a comment. If this content was helpful, you can support the podcast by buying me a coffee. It might actually end up being a glass of wine or some tea, but you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash creative boost.